Hi, I'm Valentina Shin from Adobe Research. I'll be introducing a work in collaboration with my colleagues from Adobe and UC Berkeley. Our work is about computing correspondence between similar groups of elements in graphic designs. For example, in this design, there are repetitions of similar elements for each building, with different elements corresponding to each other. Sometimes we also see similar elements across multiple designs. Our work is about computing a robust element-wise correspondence within and across vector graphics designs. So why do we want to compute correspondence? Designers often need to apply consistent edits across these repeating sets of elements. For example, consider this graphic design. I applied animation effects to the first set of elements representing the year 2000. Now I want to apply the same style of animation effects to the rest of the design. Instead of applying the animation one element at a time, which I had to in order to prepare the slide, I would like to do something like this. Copy animation from the original set of elements, select the rest of the elements, and transfer animation. I'd like to be able to do this within and across designs, and ideally the method can handle slight variations in the designs. We can achieve this by computing a robust element-wise correspondence between graphic designs. Once we have robust correspondence, we can also use it for other applications such as suggesting similar designs. There are several different sources of information we could use. For example, previous approaches include leveraging the history of edit operations, encoded structures in the document, or explicitly specify structures in procedurally generated designs. We propose a different approach that does not require user annotation or edit history. Our method can be applied retroactively to any design regardless of how it was created. Let me briefly talk about the gist of our method. There's two types of information to consider. First, are the individual elements similar? And second, do they share a similar structure? By similar structure, I don't mean the underlying representation in an SVG or a dome. Instead, we define our own notion of structural similarity based on relationships of elements that can be computed retroactively. Let's go back to the introductory example. We construct relationship graphs where nodes represent individual elements and edges represent the relationship between them. The bubble contains the house icon where the roof element is above the body of the house, so on and so forth. We automatically construct separate relationship graphs, one for the source design and the other for the target design that we are trying to match. Then we compute correspondences between their nodes by defining a graph kernel. For each element, we take a walk along the edges of the graph. So in this case, starting from the green bubble element, this is a walk of length 2. And likewise for the target graphics, starting from the red bubble element. A graph kernel compares these two walks by comparing how similar each node and edges are. Specifically, we define a node kernel that compares the element's types, sizes, shapes, and style attributes, and an edge kernel that compares the edge type and Euclidean distance. Now there are many walks of length 2 that start from the green bubble and the red bubble, so we compare all walks and compute a single similarity score. Essentially what we are doing is comparing the elements based on the similarity of the local neighborhood. And from this similarity score we can compute a pairwise correspondence between the source and target elements. Pairwise correspondence is enough to transfer isolated attributes. However, for many other operations we also need to compute an ordered grouping of the target nodes. In the introductory example, if I want a transfer animation effect applied to this source graphic, to this target graphic, I want to be able to reconstruct the animation sequence so that all the elements pertaining to year 2005 go together and come first, then the ones that pertain to 2010, and so forth. In the interest of time, I invite you to read our paper which covers these details as well as other subtleties in the algorithm, for example, using only node kernels versus graph walk kernels, computing importance weights for nodes and edge kernels, a comparison of an iterative approach versus a greedy approach for finding the best matching nodes. I'd like to share a couple of results. In this example, the orientation and size of the bars are varied, as well as the text. Here's a mobile UI sketch. This is a mock-up, so we don't have access to the widget hierarchy or functionalities. Our algorithm can handle variations in button shapes, image content, and layout. Another example, the source graphic is the first green set of elements, and the target is the rest of the elements. Our algorithm is able to handle variations in element shapes and cardinality, such as the different paths representing the person icons. In this example, the elements that make up the country flags and icons are all separate elements with different cardinality shapes, sizes, and orientation. Again, I invite you to read our paper and look at a wider set of results and discussion on limitations. Thank you.